Thanks, Clive. Tu me laisses de me concentrer, s'il te plaît. And uh, Mark, Martin, whenever you're ready. Yeah, let's do this. Um, so today uh, I'm going to present um, SEMGREP. Um, that's the polyglot uh, static analysis tool that we've been developing at R2C. Um, and um, here I am. Uh, so yeah, Martin and uh, um, uh, my language of choice has been OCaml for 20 years now. Um, started in working on protein structure originally. Uh, and then for the last 10 years, I've been working only on, well, on start in startups in the Bay Area. Um, so I, that has nothing to do with biology, but um, yeah, um, that's my, 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 my background. And um, our company, R2C, is based in San Francisco. Uh, is focused on security. Um, so the tool we're developing, even though I want to spend time on some internals that I'm more, I have to say, an expert on, uh, yeah, the, the, the goal is just not, not, not just a toy, is to actually <laughs> make something um, uh, useful and prevent and catch catch bugs early. Uh, help developers uh, not not commit uh, bad code by accident. Um, so this is this aspect of security. Um, so what is SEMGREP? Um, starting about uh, a year ago. Well, yeah, um, uh, this company R two C has started. Uh, they, they, they developed SEMGREP, which has a previous history at Facebook and even before, even before with Coxinel, uh, a tool that was developed in part with one of my colleagues, Johan. So um, he brought some of that expertise along at Facebook. He developed parsers to pass um, PHP because they're using they're using that at Facebook and he added more languages. Then eventually he joined R2C and um, I joined the project the SEMGREP project last, last, last summer and they are already getting started with this. Uh, it's got good traction. Um, people like it and I'm going to present a bit how it works um, and what, what, why it's appealing. Um, so yeah, in short. Um, it's uh, SEMGREP is a lightweight uh, static, static analysis tool. Um, it's really just like grep, but a grep that understands the uh, source code. Um, so you, you write your patterns as, as, as code, pseudocode. It's really just really using your family, the familiar syntax. And um, added to that, there are a few extra constructs for um, for expressing patterns, but it's not very hard. Uh, so yeah, it's relatively fast also. It, and it works uh, for a variety of languages. So that's going to be the focus of my uh, talk today, how we deal with all those languages. Um, so you can see the list here. Um, uh, some are supported completely. Others are still kind of in progress. Um, um, and uh, yeah, we'll kind of I present uh, the, the tech behind that. So first, let me uh, let me show you a bit of SEMGREP. So well, there's GREP and there's trees. So uh, what you can do with GREP is well, it starts easy. Uh, if you look at the first exec, well, you can catch that with. Uh, with a grep, uh, you have to put a backslash in front uh, in front of your parentheses. But other than that, it's going to work. Um, okay. Uh, now, th third case. Oh, there's a space before uh, before the parentheses. So okay, we have to take care of that. So modify our pattern and add a backslash s. 
for back for for white space and then oh wow well, um, multi-line patterns that's that's that gets tricky really tricky with the grep actually i don't don't even know how to deal with that uh and oh a function has is not really called exec is something else underscore exec and our grep pattern will probably match that but it, we don't want that and well comments well grep is not going to understand comments um and same for string literals all those things get really hard to deal with uh, so either you you are too, uh, too restrictive or you have very complex patterns that are brittle or or, or you just you have you catch too many things which are false positives so well all right so yeah that's that's because same grep uh, grep works on strings and programs really are meant to, meant to be understood as as trees um and uh that's the way we choose. So that's the correct way. Um, you know, there are, there are many tools that deal with uh, that deal with trees for tree matching. Okay, there's, a, there's a short list here. Um, they're all uh, specialized. That's the thing. They are specialized to one specific language. They will they will be good for certain types of linting or this or that, but not super generic and yeah they are we have to set up and learn a new tool for each of those languages uh, so that is difficult um and uh if imagine if you are the uh in charge of security at your company you're going to want to review and audit all the code um and you may want to this you, you you want you want to catch certain patterns certain bad, bad usage and you have to deal with all the languages that they use. Uh, sometimes it's configuration files written in a in a special syntax, and all of these. Well, we kind of we want a way to to find to find problems in those. So, and we want there are no not no tools for everything. So, we're trying to give that. All right. So uh, that's a blog about the very the, the two extremes, and uh, we sit in the middle. Uh, so the regex based approaches are well fast but limited brittle and and on the other end of the spectrum we have um, complex tools that can be slow or hard and hard to set up uh, so yeah we're trying to find between this sweet spot where where it's kind of you can do easy, the easiest, easiest things uh, easily, the simple things easily, and also get some more advanced stuff done. Um, so let me show you uh, the basic. So the basic usage of SEMGREP, uh, there's not much more than this, but uh, the, 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 the essential ones are this ellipsis and meta variable constructs. So let me start with, um, with the ellipsis. Uh, so we have this thing. Uh, it's a live editor. So let's let's go there. Okay. So this is semgrep.dev. You can find it at semgrep. It's, that's the playground that can be used to uh, explore semgrep and, and to create your own uh, your own uh, rules. So this is here um, a little exercise. So in this box, uh, this box here, the to do with the to do. Uh, this is where we're going to put our pattern. Uh, the examples on the right of what type of what type of patterns you want to create. You, you, you can you can create for for Python here. This is Python. Uh, we could pick other languages, but this example is for Python. Uh, and here are some test some target program. Uh, which, has, which has a bunch of, of calls to exec, and uh, we would like to catch those. <clears throat> well, the correct ones, that is uh, this one, obviously, line four, line six. Uh, also, this one has space. We want to catch that uh, multi-line one. This one, we don't want to catch it. Also, the comment, that's a comment, shouldn't, shouldn't surface. Uh, this is a quoted string, shouldn't it's not a call to a function, so the last three shouldn't match. So let's see, let's see we, if we can do something like that. So, well, this is our first uh, same grep pattern that we enter here. Um, dot dot dot, where we have a sequence of things. Um, 
and that can and let's see uh, let's see what it, if it works. All right, so this is nice. Um, we got all the uh, we, cut, we got all the calls that we wanted, even the first one, which is actually uh, uh, an alias. So other function, this other function function is an alias for exec, and uh, this was caught correctly. Um, so this shows that yeah, we, we try to do a little bit more than just syntax matching, um, and this is where the same where the same means in same grep is for semantics. So um, we're trying to do a semantic grep, and so yeah, we're possibly adding features to to make it more and more powerful. Um, oops, here we go. Uh, so the other 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 special patterns we have are called um, meta variables, um, uh, and the meta variable is like it's a capture. So we can capture things that match and give it a name. Uh, so here um, for this this code, uh, we're going to try to find places where we have something. It, compared to the same thing. So something equals equals the same thing, whatever that is. Uh, so if you have here, cat is cat equals cat equal to cat. Well, um, okay, we want to catch that. Uh, we don't want to catch seven equals eight. Um, it's a simple example, uh, which may or may not be useful in practice, but in general, you don't want to compare two identical things. So anyway, so let's let's try. So that's, um, that's called, this is, this is the dollar the dollar notation is special uh, same grep syntax and so we can do that dollar x um, so if we do dollar y that's gonna that also means anything x is anything y is anything and this will catch anywhere where we apply the the, the equality operator so it catches everything now if we want to catch something equals the same thing. All we have to do is use the same variable here. And ta -da. so yeah, it works. If you look here, we have the same exact expression on the left and on the right. Uh, presumably, it would be a, a programmer error. So uh, we can make more complicated uh, pattern than this, um, obviously. Um, and um, yeah, so this is basic uh, same grep usage. There are we offer other things like I think one one interesting one I'm gonna I'm gonna mention here is is the fix. So auto fix. Um, this example we have a highlight I highlighted a call to launch an HTTP server on, on port 80, whatever. But this this uses the this vanilla func that is this function that's that's insecure because it doesn't use TLS. And you want to find this one and replace it with the function that that uh, that uses TLS. Uh, so, so this in this view we have the the YAML config for the rule. It has a bit of fluff, which is actually useful. That's, that explains it explains the background, so that the when the when the flaw is detected in the in the, in the code, the user know what's going on. Uh, but essentially, there's a pattern that we want to write and a fix for this pattern. So, all right, what is our pattern going to be? Okay, uh, it's going to be uh, HTTP dot well this thing. Um, and I don't really care, do I care what's in here? Oh yes, I do care what's in here because I'm going to reuse them. So, okay, I call this port and here, what is this? Hmm, actually, I don't know, I'm going to call it X, call it X. Uh, and we want to replace it with the, with the function called the same with the TLS suffix, okay. So my fix is going to be this, and I hope it works. Okay, so we have a match. 
This is good. And a suggestion. Or let's see if we can apply the fix. Tada. And the fix was applied. So that's an experimental feature, I think, in same grep. But yeah, uh, we want to, that to work well uh, eventually because that's it's just nice. And uh, so all the integration work of integrating same grep in CI is uh, very significant. So I'm not really working on that. I'm going to present more the internals of parsing. But uh, yeah, you get a sense of the sort of things we can do with same grep. Um, and so now, uh, this was warm up, and you get a sense of yeah um, what we want to do. So we saw that uh, we deal with a bunch. We, we want to deal with various languages. Or maybe if I back up a bit, uh, I'm show you the languages that we have in there. Um, so we have those are listed here. So all our all those are. Uh, normal languages that are programming languages. We have, I think we have JSON, which is uh, we just a subset of JavaScript. Uh, we have YAML, that's uh, its own weird thing, but um, all the languages are managed in this similar way. And then there is this uh, generic pattern matching, which is something else. I'm going to talk about it also. It's for dealing with uh, with unknown languages. Um, but all the other languages are dealt with in the same fashion using the same grep pattern that we just saw. And um, so for that, we use this generic AST. So let's see. Um, a pattern, as we saw, is it looks like pseudocode. It's really the same, it uses the same parser as the programs we want to uh, to match against the pattern. Uh, so it's just that the, the parser, the, the grammar for the parser is extended with dot, dot, dot and meta variables, but they use the same parser, which is interesting. Uh, and it work, and they both result in some, some AST and we call that our, the generic AST. That is, regardless of the language we start with, which is, in, in this example here, we have Python, Ruby, and JavaScript. Uh, we use one way, one, one technique or another uh, to get to our generic AST, but they all converge to this generic AST, and which is a uniform representation that accommodates all the languages. And um, that's quite nice. So here we have, we have three, three passing flows. But the main one is um, the one we prefer now is using TreeSitter. I'm going to explain a bit what TreeSitter is, uh, and it goes in two in two steps. And the first step is well, with we have a whole machinery that that gives us a CST, a concrete syntax tree, uh, also known as the parse tree, which has all all the details. So in, you know all the semicolons, parents, and so on. Uh, whereas an AST uh, might uh, strip these these off and um, is more it is nicer to work with. So from tree setter we get a CST, and then the CST is adapted, uh, is mapped into the generic AST. So um, I'm going to show a bit of that. Uh, we also have legacy parsers. Um, the, the the ones we came with with per, with, with the per that uh, you and developed at Facebook. Um, so Python, for example, uses this parser. It's actually written using uh, Menier, which is parser generator for OCaml. There's nothing really uh, special about it. It works well, uh, but these parsers need to be maintained. Uh, on the right, we have another flow that's more complicated uh, for historical reasons, also based on tree sitter and some also on the old stuff. Um, so I'm going to mostly show you uh, the tree sitter stuff today. Uh, so, uh, so yeah. So anyway, once we have uh, when we have a generic AST for our pattern and for our target program, we can compare them. Uh, and this is what the, our matching does. So we have a single, well, pretty uh, consequential P 
piece of code, but a single piece of code for that takes care of matching a pattern against a target program. And uh, this all works on the, the, our generic AST. Uh, so I can show you the proof here. Um, earlier, I ran um, our parsers on, um, on the Python program on the left and a JavaScript program on the right. Uh, they, are pretty, they are really simple. Uh, and you can see the, uh, a dump of the generic AST. So if you look close, you'll see that they are the same. Uh, we have a function definition in both cases and, and um, uh, everything is very similar. There's no notion, there's no, there's no clue that we're using Python or, or JavaScript in, the, in, this, in these ASTs. Uh, on the right, we have console.log instead of print. So that makes a, that makes a difference in the tree. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, that's, that's is, this is the beast. This is our generic AST. And, um, um, as you can imagine, we since we accommodate all the languages and each language has uh, its own uh, set of features, uh, well, um, we, uh, we have many nodes, many possible, many kinds of nodes in our tree. So this is a snapshot. Um, I could show you more details about this tree. It's not that interesting, but um, uh, it's about 2,000 lines of type definitions. <laughs> and um, for those interested, um, we started an effort to uh, make those, uh, make the, to export the AST uh, in a JSON format that will be uh, documented and uh, usable from other languages. Uh, you can ask me for, about that if you're interested, but uh, yeah, I th we think it could be useful for others who like to experiment uh, on, you know, uh, d doing stuff with uh, programs and doing so for multiple languages, not just one. Um, so um, uh, this this huge AST needs to be traversed when we do several things, different operation. <laughs> One of the big operations is matching, but we do other things, um, constant propagation and optimizations and this and that. And we can't really have uh, a thousand lines of pattern matching each time if, if we want to just scan, scan the tree uh, for, for something. So here's a little example. Uh, I took this snippet of code from, um, um, from an optimization that we do that needed to access, uh, to, to visit statements, statement nodes and identifier nodes, but it doesn't care about the rest. So if you look at the key, key uh, ident, um, uh, identifier here, that's a field in an OCaml record. So uh, if you're familiar with the visitor pattern, uh, that's great. Otherwise, uh, yeah, I'm going to explain it. Um, so what it does is there is a, a generic uh, a function that that's written once and for all that is that will visit all the nodes and all the kinds of nodes in the tree. And when it finds a node of type, uh, in this case, uh, ident, it will call the function that we provided that is in charge of doing something with that node. Uh, this is the little anonymous function we have here, which uh, um, which does something with uh, with this ID. Um, if you do the next one, the, the other one is KSSTMT um, that gets called when we visit a statement. Also, we do something for a statement. Um, so um, this machinery is works. I th is, is typically used in other languages than OCaml that don't have pattern matching and they don't have algebraic data types. In OCaml, we have those. So this is a little, feels like a step, I don't know, it feels a bit heavy, but um, it works. And well, if you did you need to visit uh, like just the identifiers, for example, in your, in your AST, uh, it gets the job done really fast uh, instead of writing a thousand lines of 
recursive functions uh, for dealing with all the possible cases. Um, so that's that's how it works. Um, and um, yeah. Uh, I have a quick question. So, uh, so your generic AST, how, does that carry enough information to do like trans, translation between languages, or um, or is it um, is it short of that? Uh, so, you saw the autofix. I, I showed the autofix example. So we do uh, we do indeed. Uh, I haven't worked on that myself, so I don't know how well it works. We have some way of printing back into uh, a concrete syntax for a specific language. Uh, I don't know how well it works or how or if, if it works for all languages, but yeah. So in that sense, there would be a way to go from concrete syntax to a generic, and then and then pretty print that generic snippet into the a chosen language uh, and that would do a translation. Um, yeah, uh, we have to look at, at, the, at the quality of this transformation, but yes, we, we, at least some of it is supported. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, yeah, um, so once we have this generic AST, we can, we, we, we're good to go. Basically, that's my message here. Uh, there's a lot of possibilities that are offered. We don't need to worry about specificity. Well, there are still specific features of some languages that are present in this tree, but um, we could also choose to not deal with them depending on what we're trying to do. Um, if we just want to find function calls, like don't need to know about all the features of our languages. Um, yeah, I, I would imagine um, trying to make something that also understands like Rust borrow checker or something like that would be a. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it, it's so we're gonna have some Rust specific node in our tree. Uh, we have this for many languages. So sometimes there yeah, are some kinds of nodes that are specific for one language, like OCaml, for example. It's functional, so. It, it, it does, doesn't have state. Well, I mean, it doesn't have state. It, it, it's things are organized a bit differently. So, um, but but but, but it, it works in the end. Um, so uh, yeah. Um, so that, that's that's nice when we get to the generic AC. That's my message. Uh, getting there though is interesting part. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about now uh, like the various passing technologies. Um, so let's see. I mentioned tree setter earlier. Uh, I'm gonna talk about more about that. Um, so, but the main the main two parser generators we have uh, we're using now are Minier, which is an LR1 uh, parser generate parser generator. For OCaml, um, LR1 is a type of grammar. If you know or remember this, uh, it's, one means this allows the parser to make to choose which branch to take uh, based on the looking ahead the next token. And uh, most of the time, it's good enough. But not all programming language are uh, are designed to work like that. So uh, sometimes it's harder and um, Actually, uh, this other tool, TreeSitter, lets us do that. Um, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain a bit more. So we use those two. So we we migrated to TreeSitter uh, last summer, um, and that's that's big, big interesting thing. Uh, we also have a handwritten OCaml parser, O parsers when they are available. Like for YAML, we added YAML recently. Um, just use the YAML library for OCaml, and that's great. It's a, a pretty it's not very simple language actually, um, so we're happy to use library. Uh, and um, I'm also talking about about something I, I developed, which is this catch-all fallback it's called space grep, which is a step below uh, sem grep, uh, but um, it's more in the spirit of sem grep. So it's kind of between the grep and 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 sem grep, instead the shared grep suffix 
Um, all right. Uh, so let me show you a bit of, of, about Triceter. Um, uh, Triceter is a big project that was created by uh, Max Brunsfeld, uh, who uh, was working on it recently at GitHub. GitHub hosts, is, manages this project now. Um, and it's open source, uh, so everyone benefits. Uh, it was designed uh, for specifically for editors, so supports incremental parsing. That's not something we use uh, for purposes, but okay. Uh, and um, what it does do? Well, the parser generator it generates C code. That's nice. Uh, at least for us from OCaml, we can call the C code and get uh, and, and get uh, the parse tree. Uh, uh, great thing is that there are grammars for this. Uh, many of them <laughs> were developed by by, by Max, uh, but now there's a bunch of community members, uh, including ourselves, um, contributing to those. Uh, so yeah, there are grammars for many languages. Um, like maybe I don't know. How many is it? Something like thirty of the most of popular languages. Uh, it, it it increasing it's increasing slowly. Um, and uh, so what? Why why did we use? Uh, why are we using Triceter? Well, it was a very rational, uh, uh, well considered choice. Uh, problem is that maintaining grammars in OCaml uh, for many languages is a lot of work. Not because of our camel, but because uh, we are we are on our own. Um, so instead, Triceter has many contributors. Uh, so uh, the community will contribute um, to the grammars. Uh, we also contribute to the grammars. Uh, Everyone is happy to benefit from each other's work, and um, it's a lot more productive because indeed writing the grammars is uh, time intensive. Uh, and yeah, not always obvious. Um, so that said, Triceter has some unique features as well uh, that, that we take advantage of. Um, so one of them is um, GLR passing. So G GLR stands for generalized LR. And um, so if you worked with um, uh, parser generators like, uh, like Yak, uh, sometimes you get a conflicts, static conflicts. So at the time of gen processing the grammar, <laughs> Yak will tell you, oh, you have a conflict between this and this. I don't know what to choose. Uh, and you have to pass uh, to specify precedences. And great. And if you're able to do that uh, and and determine statics, uh, statically what, what, what rule or what branch should be picked, that's great. But sometimes it's not possible. And uh, this is uh, this this can be very tricky. So instead of 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 doing some weird preprocessing work, we there's this uh, dynamic conflict resolution in which the parser will try all the possible branches. Uh, and if one one branch works and the other ones fail, that's that's great. We take the one that works. If several several succeed. There's a system of scores, and the ones with the highest score will be picked. So um, it uh, it's a very nice way of of getting out of, of of difficult passing situations, and it's optional. It has to be specified in the grammar. So that's also nice. So it's not the default because it's a little slow, and you try to avoid it. But it's really just one one option that we have to make. Uh, to, to solve difficult problems. So that's very nice. The other one is error recovery. Um, so error recovery, uh, when, the, when the parser finds the region of the program that, that can be parsed, but uh, it can be skipped over, then uh, it does this. So we get in our parse tree, we see an error node somewhere. We can happily ignore it, and the rest of the of the AST is or the CST. The rest of the tree is still valid and well formed after removing this error node, and that's really cool because, well, if you if you're in a text editor, um, 
that's the benefit because you want most of your your program to be syntax highlighted and what you're being your, what you're typing is not highlighted but that's okay you know it's broken so um, this this is good for this situation in semgrep is great because sometimes some new syntax is not supported by our parser or um, it can be that um, uh, there's a programming error, you know, that happens. Uh, uh, but, but most of the time is, yeah, is, is that we don't support a specific syntax feature, maybe because it's too recent. And we are still able usually to pass most of the file and ignore the line or the few lines that have the error. And that's, that's really nice. So um, this way, this way, same grep can find scan most of the code, 99.99% uh, 99 .99 of the code we have with good grammar, uh, and just one, one line here, here and they will fail. So those are the good things about Tricitor. Um, so this is, um, I don't know if I should really go into the details, but this is the Tricitor integration work we had to go through uh, to make it work with OCaml. Um, and um, um, there are multiple steps. Um, the first step is, um, well, natural. We have to add, since, since we're going to pass uh, some web patterns with the, uh, with, with the parser, we, uh, we need to support dot, 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 and meta variables. And uh, we extend the grammar for that. Uh, that's fine. Then we have the step of, um code generation that produces uh, a, a grammar in json format that's very nice to deal with we simplify it uh to make it easier to process uh for our code generator uh we feed it again to tricetter that produces the final parser that c uh that's usually 100 or 200 000 lines of of c code and uh this is the Parser that's going to run and we're going to be linked to a camel code. Uh, but our code generator then, then takes the, the, the grammar.json and, and, and generates several files. And uh, some of this is all tricky. Um, but yeah, uh, we generate one type for the concrete syntax tree um, that is complete. Uh, very nice to use in OCaml. Um, we have a file that does some recovery code because the the, the tree we get from Tricitor doesn't have all the information, so we have to recover some information to match exact to, to know exactly what branch in the grammar was taken. That's a little tricky. I'm going to show something, but don't panic. Uh, and there's also a big boilerplate file. <coughs> that's involved in mapping our our CST uh, to the generic AST. So some of that boilerplate is generated and the rest will, will be done by hand. So um, let's, uh, let, let, let's first take into, uh, let's first look into a uh, nice and, and clean things that we do as they were intended. Um, so here is a little grammar extension. Um, the language is a Kotlin. Um, that's one of the uh, of the hot languages we we are uh, in the process of of adding support for. Um, so this here on the right we have a full grammar extension that starts from uh, from the official uh, Tricitor grammar for Kotlin. And this is JavaScript. So it's a whole DSL within JavaScript, so a domain specific language uh, that, uh, that is used for specifying um, uh, our grammars. It's, it's pretty nice given that it's, it's plain JavaScript. Um, the, there's a choice function, for example, then here uh, the expression, so expression colon expression is a rule, a grammar rule. And uh, here we say that the previous uh, grammar rule, previous, is going to be extended. So it, it's a choice that to which we add other choices. 
so uh, sorry previous is is some rule and we turn we turn the expression into a choice between whatever we had previously and um these new constructs um so dollar dot ellipsis is our dot 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 and this is another one that i didn't present um we also have something for meta variables so um this is how um, um, tristor grammars are written. Uh, so the original grammar, if we look into it, it's it's just like this, but it's like a thousand or two thousand lines of, of, of similar code of, of code like that. And um, now you can see that here we have this choice operation between different rules. Um, this ellipsis rule and this deep ellipsis rule and previous we don't even it's not clear what it is but it's whatever the well the it's a previous value for the expression rule um it's a choice so this choice is an alternation and each each of the choices will uh be translated in our ast into uh, a case so into a kind of node because uh, an ellipsis is one kind of node, the previous expression, whatever, whatever it was, it's another kind of node. The deep ellipsis is another kind of node. Um, and we want that to be well typed in OCaml. So we have some machinery to make sure this, this happens. And uh, this is a bit of what I'm showing here. So, if we run the Tricitor parser using the Tricitor tools uh, for this uh, simple uh, hello program, um, here's what we get. Um, um, this, this function definition gets translated into this thing, which looks very neat and concise and has uh, nodes that make sense. Um, now, the problem is it doesn't show us everything, unfortunately. Uh, and we have to recover certain 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 parts. So on the left, that's uh, I, I highlighted a region where 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 Tricitor, the, the the original Tricitor output shows an expression statement, and this expression statement has a child that's a call expression. Very nice, you might say, but if you look at the grammar. Is the path taken is more complicated, and we actually want all that path. So, if you look here in, the, in this recovered um, recovered CST um, that that we have in OCaml, we have new nodes here. So the first one X STMT. Uh, that's one kind of node for an, that's the expression statement, uh, and there's the call exp that correspond to a uh, call expression on the left, but in between there are two uh, two sub levels that were completely emitted or omitted in the original uh, output. So, yeah, we have a machinery to recover that. Um, but takeaway is yes, it works. Um, and uh, <laughs> it was quite uh, quite. Uh, an adventure to get that to work, but anyway, um, we got some good uh, okay, generated OCaml okay code, so I'm going to jump to that. Um, if you have questions about this stuff, we can, can talk about it later. Uh, so the generated code is looks like like this on the right. Uh, uh, it's um, we include the original grammar for reference. Um, that's useful because it's the most readable version of the grammar. Everything that derives from that derived from it is gets less and less uh, readable. Um, the other thing is that it's a Dune, it's a Dune ready project. So Dune is the build system for OCaml. Um, it's uh, completely, um, how do you say, uh, modular. So you can plug this uh, this specific uh, repo. Uh, can take take this Git repo, plug it into as a sub as a Git sub module into your project, and if it's already a part of a Dune project, Dune will find it and will build all of this very nicely. So uh, that, that's thank you for the for 
thank you the Dune people for the great tooling. It works really well. Um, and that makes it easy uh, for, for us and for users uh, of OCaml. Um, let's, yeah, let me show you a bit of, of the generated code. Um, OK, so this is for Ruby. We generate uh, one, one Git repository for each language. Uh, um, because it's convenient, we like to work on, on languages independently. Uh, so anyway, this is a, a large amount of generated code. Uh, this uh, parser.c, that's the main thing that Resetter generates. Uh, I think we can't open it because it's, yeah, it's too big. It's in the hundreds of thousands of lines of C code. And we have our OCaml code, uh, in particular this one, this one that is in charge of doing this recovery I, I, I alluded to. Uh, well, uh, this is part of, of the machinery. Uh, it's all nicely pretty printed. If you know what's going on here, uh, you can recognize uh, a language like alt, alternative sequence. Uh, those are essentially regular expressions. And we run regular expressions on the children to figure out the kind of the different children we have our in our original CST uh, from Tricitor. And the regular matching allows us to match to match those children with the gram anonymous grammar rule. And then we can name every piece. Um, it's not supposed to make sense, but uh, I, I like to watch that generated code is always so satisfying. Um, and it's pretty long, so I always feel good about this because yeah, I just don't have to write that or even worry about that or even open it ever because it's pretty mechanical. Uh, it's debugged really when you write the generator once and for all, but then it just works, uh, it's cool. Now the cst.ml, that's what we're gonna consult uh, as, a, as a reader and, um, and a programmer because we're gonna have to do some, uh, some work on, on the cst to convert it to the generic AST. So the cst type that's generated by uh, our tool, OCaml okay, tree sitter, um, and all those types were generated from the grammar. So this, this is a mirror of the structure of the grammar. And each, each play, if, if, everywhere we had, we have a choice uh, in the grammar, which is an alternation between different, different rules. Uh, this results in, a, in an algebraic data type. Uh, so this one is, well, it's almost an enum. But yeah, uh, uh, each of the possible uh, cases receives a name. Uh, here we have got cute names based on uh, the actual ASCII characters involved. Sometimes it's less, sometimes it's, you're trying to get, give good names based on what we see. You need to give good names that are, you know, uh, meaningful to human and um, that are also, uh, to say non-conflicting and stable. So this whole art of naming things, uh, that's one of the two or three uh, difficult problems in, in, in computer science. Uh, so yeah, here we go. Uh, sometimes we have things that are named less nicely like this. Oh, oh, here is one, here's one. This one was called Anon Choice CST, some hash. Uh, that's the best we can do because it's, inline the patterns, inline things that don't really have a good name. Um, and also that's the name that we generated. So anyway, so this whole thing is for, uh, is the concrete syntax tree definition for Ruby, uh, Ruby language. And I think the grammar is about a thousand lines and this one, is, this generated file is 1200. Um, and uh, yeah, so let me go back to the slides. Um, so now, 
Okay, so with FreeCitter, we get a very nice uh, CST uh, via some OCaml transformation. And the, the thing is, the CST is very specific to the, to the language uh, we are parsing. So we only need to translate the CST to the generic AST. You might think mm, that may be a lot of work. And why didn't we write the grammar by hand? Well, writing the grammar is the most time uh, consuming uh, operation here. Um, because, yeah, converting the CST to the AST is some manual labor, but it's not that hard, especially once you know the generic AST, what construct it has. Uh, it's not that hard, so we still prefer to do that. So yes, we're doing this crazy um, operation of starting from this generated boilerplate, which is a function that maps. So here's just one example. We have uh, this map argument list. So argument list is a type of node, and this defines a function that maps an argument list node into something else. And this something else should be um, something equivalent in the generic AST. Um, so what we could generate is uh, some this, this boilerplate with to do. So we have to do, the, to do here, to do there. And that will have to be replaced by constructs of the generic AST. Um, so that's the labor intensive part. And so by generating this file already automatically, we get you know, half, half of the work uh, done roughly. Uh, I can show you, I can show you the, the, the original generated file. So the generated file looks, looks like this. And this is all our boilerplate, generated boilerplate. It's, it will be fun to write by hand. Uh, it's, nice, it's structured in a somewhat obvious and repetitive fashion, so that's nice. Um, now, we map this by hand, and then we have to maintain that, but we ma we, we, this is the, mod the hand-modified version, so we, we replace all the to-dos with actual constructs and uh, what can I say? Yeah, for example, here there was there was a to do originally. Now it's an empty list, so we have something that a list of parameters or something here. Um, and yeah, uh, and so we have to maintain this mapper again. This is pretty long, but uh, it's not that hard. All right, and uh, so that's all for the three set of stuff. Uh, hope I give you a good overview of how we do things, that it's not that simple. There's a lot of uh, code generation passes um, and it's very satisfying in the end because uh, we feel very you know, powerful. We can deal with all those languages uh, at once and they all converge to one, one way uh, of doing things. Now, the other thing I mentioned earlier is, well, what if we have a configuration file uh, for, um, I think Terraform has their own syntax uh, for config files. Uh, we have um, maybe exotic languages that are used here and there in, in some code base, uh, um, or maybe we want to match some HTML snippet that that's embedded in some special templating language. And um, um, well, we do support JSX, and, and which is a, a React extension for JS, but maybe we don't support this specific extent, this specific templating mechanism or whatever. So for those, we have uh, this space grep tool, which is our last resort. And um, so, uh, we didn't want. We didn't want to. I, 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 I thought it was it was too bad to not be able to to use something like semgrep when you don't have a grammar and have to resort to grep, and grep being so unaware that things can be on multiple lines. It was frustrating. So, this this space grep uh, tries to do things like semgrep when possible. Uh, it should be use usable by by a user. 
out of the box. Um, no configuration needed. The right pattern that looks like the actual code they want to match. We don't need backslashes. Oh, that's. <laughs> I think that's that's very pleasant. Um, and. Uh, and yeah, uh, it's just you know e easier than a grep. It's kind of like some grep, but uh, not, 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 not completely. So let me show you what what we can get out of it. Uh, that's a screenshot of what we get. Um, uh, let me show you in the live editor. It's loading. So I entered this exact pattern we had earlier. Here you can see uh, the language chosen is uh, generic. Hmm. Actually, you might be able to run this same exact thing with Python. Oh. All right, so with uh, we don't catch the notion that there's an, an alias, that safe function <coughs> is the same as exec. Space grep has no idea. It has no idea about, well, it has idea about identifiers. It didn't match this one, that's nice. Um, multiple lines are not a problem. And um, uh, what, what else? Uh, it doesn't know about uh, comments. It doesn't know about string literals even. Uh, now we can still do certain things like see for, for example, if we want to match anything that's in the string. Uh, that, that, that works. That should match uh, only this one. Yeah, this is correct. Um, maybe we can we can do something like that. Maybe we want to to catch all the exec, but exclude those uh, that are that use a constant string as argument because that's considered safe. You don't want to uh, to execute um, a arbitrary code but executing a hard-coded uh, command that's that's perfectly fine so let me try this so this should match uh the dangerous execs and so yeah we can we can do that here so we didn't catch exec ls because this is secure we have some var we're not sure where some var comes and that that, that could be dangerous on um, if you compare to Python. Actually, this syntax can be used also on Python, I think. Let's try it. Um, it's a live demo. But yes, so Python works better. It has, we have, that's the regular sem grab that has a notion of, of, of comments and, and, and strings. But other than that, yeah. Uh, so you can see that the generic mode is, is, is limited, but for simple things, it's gonna it's gonna work, and we might get false positives, and well, that's okay. But yeah, so that's that's the thing we have. Um, so how does it work? Um, well, uh, I think I wanted to show you a bit of the OCaml code involved because it's it's so much simpler than uh, the full fledged generic AST. So the view of the program is really simple. Uh, a program is, is, is made of, uh, of atoms that are one of those three things. It's a word, a punctuation, or a byte. Uh, and uh, a node in, the, in, the, in our AST, well, AST or CST for space grep is, is a list of nodes or, or an atom. And this is all the 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 definitions we have on the right we have the the tree corresponding uh, also the the ast definition for a pattern and you can see that we have these extra constructs so uh, for meta variables and dots and here we do support some meta variable matching in uh in space grep um uh, and yeah that's that's that simple and nice uh, idiomatic OCaml. Um, same for matching. So for matching uh, a pattern against a, a tree, uh, that's very idiomatic OCaml. I think I'm just proud of this code. So I wanted to show it uh, here. Like that's the kind of 
the, the way of writing OCaml code that's nice and like we learn in school, that's uh, it's not too complicated. Um, once you understand uh, how to write recursive functions to deal with trees and you get the notion of pattern matching, that's that should be understandable. Um, that's uh, that's I think that's all for for space grab. So uh, I'm going to conclude my my talk here. And uh, yeah, so this is our our program analysis team with managers, um, four people: Emma, Iago, uh, Johan, and myself uh, are working um, uh, on the on this on the core of SEMGREP and uh, making it better every day. Uh, Thank you all for your for your attention. So, if you want to install it, you have instructions here. You can find them online. Uh, we have uh, this online editor, the playground uh, that I use for the demos, and you can play with that. Uh, feel free to reach out uh, on Twitter uh, or to me directly, um, and um, you'll survey here if you're interested. And that's it. That's uh, that's all for my presentation. So. Um, let me know if you have questions, if you are inspired or terrified by this. Uh, definitely the, the, the former. Um, this is uh, pretty great. Um, so how, uh, how incorporated has uh, SEMGREP become into your development process? Uh, into ours? Uh, well, we we use it on, on our source code, you know, the dog fooding. We don't do very much with it. I think it's very valuable for uh, we we're doing static analysis. So even though we run it uh, on OCaml, we don't find that much stuff. Uh, it's really I think um, it's going to be useful for like real like uh, to say applications, web applications uh, that involve a lot of have a lot of IOs, especially uh, user input, tainted input. Uh, there's a lot of, of security issues there. So yeah, we haven't we haven't. I I myself as OCaml, someone involved with with OCaml didn't have to fix many errors. When I touch some Python code, something surfaces up sometimes, and yeah, the, 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 yeah, it's nice. It's we are not. Um, Submerged by false positives, as far as I can tell, uh, which is which is good. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, if you want a, a perspective on on security issues, I, I think we have talks by our, our colleagues. Uh, I think we have Clint Gibbler gave something that's available online. I can I can give I can give you a link. I think I posted it on Twitter earlier. Uh, where, where where he goes more into details about uh, real real world usage. Um, yeah, um, did, I, did I answer your question? Or? <laughs> I, I, I suppose you did. <laughs> you use it occasionally, but uh, it's yeah. Uh, if you're if you're using if you're writing OCaml, then everything. Yeah, that's the thing. It's a little weird. So uh, this is a functional programmers group. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say things uh, <laughs> that should sound familiar. To, Functional programmers, but uh, it's like a kind of a, 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 a niche. I mean, at least OCaml um, is not as extreme widely used, and we use it especially here for for the kind of things where it shines really. Uh, that's um, uh, so we are kind of in our little world. Um, um, yeah. Um, what can I say? Uh, yeah, I lost my train of thoughts. I kind of want to repeat. I don't want to repeat things, but yeah. I did have a, a question. So, like, what kind of um, do you see any applications to like editor tooling? I mean, I, I noticed that there's a SumGrep plugin for VS Code, but have you seen like a lot of use there? It seems like it'd be really powerful. In yes, yes, it is. So we have uh, excellent colleagues who take care of that. Um, I haven't really followed myself. Um, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff to do there. I think there's some uh, VS Code plugin. Uh, not sure about other other editors, but yeah, that that should run in the background. And as as you, as you write code, 
it should find problems. So um, the integration is indeed a, a, a big, a big, uh, a big effort. A lot of work to be done there to be, you know, have things up and running quickly in CI, um, and that should run fast enough also. So speed is more on our side uh, uh, to, uh, you know, uh, make sure make sure things are fast enough. So that, that that's, that's an issue. But there's also convenience. Uh, we want to make sure that things are reported correctly and are easy to fix and not surprising. So we have this all these these rules. This, this, uh, these rule sets or libraries of, 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 of a library of rules that, um, that are made over time by some of us, also some external contributors are in there for catching problems. Uh, a rule is, not, is the same grep pattern usually, but at least usually are several patterns, you know, to make things, to capture more uh, interesting things and a message explaining what's going on. There's possibly a fix, uh, like I showed earlier. Um, and so all, all these rules, um, I think we have over a thousand rules now in SEMGREP and people can use these, these, these rule sets. Um, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's the config shown here on this slide, uh, R2C, that's, that's one of the rule sets, I, I think. And, um, it's meant to be easy, uh, easy to use in practice uh, without having to create your own rules. However, you can make your make your own rules if you have specific 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 code that's a little dangerous and you don't want your users to to, to call it. Then, well, sure, you can make make your own rules. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, don't hesitate to ask more or. Uh, if then let me know if I didn't answer your question. Um, uh, does anyone else uh, have have questions or do, do you guys know about OCaml a bit? Or I'm not, not sure about your, the background of the audience or uh, were you? Uh, um, is, I, 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 yes. There are uh, a few ML line language uh, users here. Uh, uh, John, uh, Mr. Bremer, um, myself to a small degree, uh, use F sharp. Um, and then Claude, uh, is, uh, mo mostly focused on OCaml. And I believe there's some other OCaml users in this, in this group as well. Um, yeah. Um, and yeah, if you have comments on OCaml, if you, is there anything you find uh, strange about what we're doing? Uh, let me know. I, I know I, I've, seen, I've been in different teams over the years. There are different ways of, well, different types of applications are being done with OCaml. I know that uh, at some point I was doing, I was in a web startup. So we're doing, uh, we, we had the whole, uh, whole back end that was uh, written in, in OCaml. Uh, so then with that, we were using LWT and it's a big thing. So we had, a, you know, an HTTP server and, and, and a lot of JSON was involved. And that's very different from what we're doing right now. Um, yeah, different people also have preferred different styles. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, this would be strange to not like it, but I really like our our our, our style right now, uh, which is kind of we try to keep things uh, plain and simple. Um, like OCaml has advanced features that has modules, so the module system of OCaml, a module, and there are modules and 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 functors. So a functors is a, a functor is a parameterized module, and now they are. So we can parameterize a module with types or with data. Uh, and you can have also now uh, in recent version of OCaml, you can have uh, first class modules that can pass around and you have to, to, to unpack them. So use them. Sometimes they are viewed as module or viewed as values and there are ways to convert those. And I know some people love that. And I know uh, I, I, I don't. I don't. I don't know. I, I. I. don't know how to use that really well. So uh, we try to keep things simple. I, I guess that's the style that we have here. Um, I don't know. Uh, yeah. 
So, um, do you find yourself using, for for example, um, in situations where a library version changes and the the surface area, the interface changes to that uh, to that library? Do you find yourself doing transfer using this to do, you know, uh, uh, updates to code bases uh, using this tool? Using um, updates. Using SEMGREP, um, how would you? Um, I, there was a syntax using replace uh, there. Yes. Yeah. Um, so you could define one pattern and define the other pattern, and then. Uh, could I jump in with a concrete example? I'm thinking like maybe going from like Python two to Python three or something like that. Is that is that kind of what you're thinking? Like or yeah. Or yeah. Uh, the you know module that or the the library that supports HTTP requests mm. had its interface changed uh, between you know this you know this version of the library and the you know some later version of the library, um, mm. and just doing that that kind of uh, syntax transformation within the same language, of course, but with uh, with you know modifying to support the you know. Um, a renamed uh, function, for example. Yeah, so sort of thing that should be possible. Um, it's, mm, I, I don't know if in practice that's something that w works really well. I mean, I, I, can, I kind of imagine that uh, APIs change because it's not, they don't change in a one to one uh, method way like it's not just a name that changes and keeps the same exact meaning if they change the name of something it's because um, maybe it's different i'm trying to imagine sorry i'm just speculating yeah but i think it's a it's a, it's a valid question and application and uh, uh, so um coccinelle is the tool that johan was working on um origin in france and they are focused on c and they have a way of, of searching uh, for code and patching it automatically. And uh, this, this stuff is used. So um, uh, yeah, it's used on the, on the Linux kernel and uh, yeah, it's good stuff, but it works only for C. And yeah, and so. Mm -hmm. I, I seem to remember some, uh, some other projects based on, um, or there was a company being built off of TreeSitter that that was doing some some of the things like that but that was you know that's not not that's not open source right um so i was just curious if if uh uh semgrep could be could be you know kind of used in those scenarios yeah yeah i mean yeah you can use some grep for for for, for various things um yeah uh i think that yeah the, the, the focus is really well, I mean, it's a startup. Uh, things change really fast, also, and I, I don't, I don't, I don't speak for all the, for the rest of the company. Uh, I'm, because I'm really focused on the the, the internals. Um, so yeah, I don't want to say something stupid, but uh, yeah, um, it's always you know, customer first. Uh, get to make 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 things that are need that that are in a heavy demand. Um, uh, so I, you know, I would. I would say it's uh, security focused uh, and trying to over, overall, we're not, we're not, um, how to say, uh, it's not like dynamic, dy dynamic um, analysis where you would try to crash a system. Uh, here we are more. We are more about uh, helping developers avoid uh, to not write ac bad things by accident. But yeah, the the, the general, I to say, vibe that I get is like, yeah, we we want to to help develop developers first to not have tools that get in their way. We don't want the security security hat person. To impose tools uh, to the developers that the developers will reluctantly use. So uh, yeah, uh, so yeah, that's what we're trying to do. I don't want to say yeah, uh, yeah. 
uh, I'm sure I kind of digressed a bit, but uh, yeah. Uh, it, that's kind of what we do anyway. We, we <laughs> our, uh, our, our meetings usually end in uh, massive digressions um, uh. <laughs> into interesting subjects. <laughs> so welcome, welcome to the Houston Functional Programming User Script. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So, it's, it's, so yeah, it's, it's a startup. Things things move fast, and that's uh, that, that, that's nice. Um, um, I can talk about okay, about other things. I don't know if you have questions about the company. Um, uh, or yeah, anything. Um, or if you were off, we are done. I don't know. It is fine, but uh, let me know how many people we have. I don't have the full view of the audience. Is it? Uh, yeah. Um, what, what, what do you think, David? Should we stop here, or are there more stuff we want to discuss? Or <laughs> 